Let's get right into the first myth. On the 9th Gen Honda Civic Si, if you do a downpipe, you need a dyno tune. That answer is false. Now hear me out, let me break this down really quick. I've got three little areas I wanna break down. We're not talking about the secondary oxygen sensor and all that fun stuff when it comes to regulations in your state. Go Google that stuff. I don't even wanna discuss it here in this video. If you know, then you know. Second, I wanna make it 110% clear. If you do any modification on your vehicle and you're trying to see a performance change or difference, then you need a dyno tune. Now getting into this, and this topic irks me a little bit. Don't use that word a lot, but it bothers me. I see so many guys on the internet spreading misinformation. Now, I did say the 9th gen specific platform, the SI, and the downpipe, but this can pertain to any vehicle that is out there. I just, as I said before, I don't want to cover everything. We're trying to keep this down to a 15 minute long video. So let's break it down really quickly and simple. Consider an engine and air pump. If you can get air in quicker and you can get air out quicker, what's that equation that is missing in between that the computer needs to change in order to hit the desired air fuel ratio? It is fuel. Closed loop, that's how we're speaking. Closed loop has two major things that you should be interested in, short-term and long-term fuel trims. So what does that mean? Thanks for asking. This is a percentage that the computer thinks that it needs to reach the desired air fuel ratio that it's trying to hit. It can either be a positive number, which means it needs to add more fuel, or it could be a negative number, which means you have to take away fuel. What does that mean as far as the downpipe goes or any other modification? And let's say you're watching this video and you're, you're a mastermind when it comes to the Mazda Miata platform. And maybe you have a topic or any other chassis that this kind of hits, hits home to you. So what does that mean with the closed loop? Well, as we said, you're able to get more exhaust out now quicker. Well, that means the car, the computer itself, needs to add more fuel to reach the desired air-fuel ratio. Now, the downpipe itself is so minimal that if you do that alone, you don't do anything else, the car will be fine, it will compensate for it, and you may not throw a check engine light. Or you may. There's a lot of guys that always report back and I see in the comments, well, I ran a downpipe and I never had to get a, to get a dyno tune and never threw a check engine light. Well, that's because you're in the parameters of the closed loop area where the computer doesn't think anything is majorly wrong. Let's say though, you do an exhaust as well and you're really flowing now more exhaust. And instead of adding, let's say, 5% more fuel, the computer now is adding 10%. And it's taking this into consideration and the long-term fuel trim and how all that stuff works. Sooner or later, you might throw a check engine light that is going to say something like, your car's running too rich or your car's running too lean because the computer is trying to compensate for that. Now, we go off the original myth. Do you need a dyno tune if you do a downpipe on a Civic Si? That answer is false. It's that simple. And I want you to also think about this really quickly. I sell downpipes, correct? I also tune for a living. I would put a lot more money in my pocket if I didn't even mention this topic, if I were to be on that side of saying, yeah, you need a dyno tune if you're going to do a downpipe. As I said before, you do need a dyno tune if you're trying to gain the, get the benefits on the performance side. But for me to say, or anybody else to say on the internet that you need a dyno tune, no matter what, it's false. You got to watch where you're getting your information out there. A lot of the times, the blind is leading the blind, giving you misinformation. And that's how problems kind of happen. That's how bigger stuff can happen. And ultimately, keep watching because the other topics kind of pertain to that. First and foremost, I have a bunch of videos on e-tuning. I'll link down below. I do offer e-tuning. And I also just did a podcast on dyno tuning. I'll link that down below as well. So, is a street tuner and e-tune better than a dyno tune? No. It will never, ever be better than either of those. Let's get into what an actual dyno is for. One of the big things a dyno is for is to allow me to tune your car in a safe environment. I don't have to focus on what's around me. I don't have to focus on the cars around me, the people around me. 
animals around me or anything else that may jump out in the road as I'm trying to tune your car properly. Second, the dyno is to help find MBT. What does MBT stand for, Bob? Thanks for asking. MBT stands for Maximum Brake Torque. Maximum Brake Torque is the peak ignition timing that your car is going to want before it stops making power. That's what a dyno is for. On top of everything else, any other changes that we're doing during a tune, we want to make sure that we're actually seeing power difference. So let's talk a little bit more about the street tuning aspect. During a street tune, the majority of the guys are just dialing in your air fuels, nothing else, nothing more. And let's face it, if you were to go buy a monkey and you were to teach him for, I don't know how many months, he could probably dial in air fuels. It's not that complicated. Yes, there's more stuff that comes involved and experience comes along the way if you're having an issue with air fuels. We're just talking about changing air fuels on a street tune. As I was talking about MBT, the other stuff that comes into play is knock. I have something called knock ears. I can put on and I can listen for knock. And when a vehicle is knocking for whatever reason, I say, oh, wait, let's figure that one out. It's not happened during a street tune. Now, I did say I do e-tunes too. E-tunes on certain vehicles have good knock sensors, but they still shouldn't be trusted. So if you are street tuning and or e-tuning, and you're just looking off the knock sensor, you still have to have some good understanding of how that all works. From what I have seen, most guys will just turn off the knock, knock system itself and not rely on any of that. Going back to the original myth, the dyno is going to help us figure out what your car likes. And when I say that, I mean power. Certain vehicles have a lot of different settings to change and see where power likes to come in, what, where it likes to be the peak number. We're talking about, you know, VTC angle. We're talking about VTEC. None of that stuff can be done on the street. And on top of that, if you do got a street tuner, you got to really hope that nothing bad happens on the street as well. Even on a car that is fairly stock. And let's take a Honda Civic Si. You're around 160 to 200 horsepower, give or take. Doing a wide open throttle pull is going to get you in the territory of probably going about 80 to 100 miles per hour. It is simply not safe. So if you got a guy that's trying to sell you on a street tune and he's sitting there and he's trying to tell you why it's better or why he can save you money and you found this video, as I said, and I will keep, keep saying, go research a little bit more. Go understand MBT a little bit more. Go understand ignition timing a little bit more. Go understand knock. Inform yourself of all that stuff so you can better your setup and better your life in a sense and not be taken advantage from some random person, wherever it may be, that's just trying to make a quick buck. And let's face it, I see all those guys as well that are posting, hey, I can, do, I can help you out. I can send you a tune. I can send you this. I've seen the other ends of that when vehicles come in here with hurt engines. And then the customer will say, well, hey, such and such sent me a tune, and now I can't get a hold of them. It's because they either ghosted you, or they're in the process of changing their name, and they're going to continue to do what they just did to you to somebody else. Education is key. Knowledge is power. As I say in these videos, they're to help you guys. I'm not just here enjoying listening to myself and cutting these videos for you. I'm really trying to educate and help you guys. Let's get into the last myth topic that we're discussing here. You need to spend $10,000 in order to make big power on a certain setup. That answer is false. Every now and then, we'll get a guy that comes in or they'll shoot me a message on Facebook or whatever it be and say, hey man, I'm really trying to make some power, whether it be, let's say, three or 400 horsepower and since we have some cars here, let's say on your Acura RSX or on your Civic, whether, whatever it be. Now, each car, as I've talked about before in the past, is going to have a weak point or a weak spot, and you have to find that. But let's talk about the RSX and the K-Series. Plenty strong. Can definitely hold some power if healthy. Realistically, what I tell people, four to 500 horsepower is the range where we're still safe, and if something were to go wrong, 
let's say an injector doesn't want to fire for a split second, eh, most likely you're not going to have an issue. When you start increasing that power, five, 600 horsepower on a stock setup, it's going to be a ticking time bomb. There's no way around that. Now, I will say, for the comments that I see or read or hear, guys thinking that they have to spend a good amount of money, I think a lot of guys are misinformed. Either they heard someone, something from somebody else, or they started to research, they started to build a budget, and everything that they're doing is top of the line. They want to make 450 horsepower, but they want to build the block with high-end parts, and they want to get sleeved. They want to make sure their fuel system is good to handle 800 horsepower, along with the ignition system. That's perfect. That's awesome. But do you need to overbuild in a sense? No. I think the problem lies where a lot of guys are either misinformed and or they heard from a buddy. They take it a little bit more to heart because it's their buddy. They can trust him. Not knowing fully that your buddy got the same wrong information from whoever else and they pass it along to you. Do you need to spend $10,000 on a Honda and Acura to get some good power? Now, I'll also add, power is irrelevant to you and me. My definition of high horsepower is completely different than maybe what you consider your definition of high horsepower. But everything can be done on a budget. Now, I'm not saying go run to Timu and buy every single part that you see on there because you're going to have issues. Am I stating that you can save about $200 if you go on the internet and you search for, let's say, a DSM blowout valve, which has been used, it's been proven, that will save you about $200. Can you find a guy that is selling a set of injectors that retails at five or $800, maybe selling them for 400 because he is going um, up with a bigger setup? Sure. Make sure they're tested, though. Make sure you get your info. Ask him if you mind, hey, can I take him to a local shop and have him tested? You can come with. Same thing with any other part. Can you buy stuff used? 100%. You can save money if you're trying to make big power. But you have to be smart. You have to be careful. As I said before, don't waste the shop owner's time and ask him, hey, is all these parts on eBay good? Hey, all these parts on Amazon, am I going to have issues? Of course, support your local shop and go in and tell them exactly what you're trying to do. I can't speak for anybody else, but I can only speak for myself. I love helping others. It doesn't matter what it's about. Vehicles, health, whatever. You gotta gain that info and knowledge and watch who you listen to. So going back originally, can you build a good setup for under 10K or even less? Yes. You can do it probably for under 4,000 actually, depending on how good of hookups you can get on parts. So the big takeaway on this myth is do not be discouraged. Do not think that you have to spend $10,000 to get a decent setup. With my final closing statement, if I were to sum it up with one word, it would be misinformation. There's so much misinformation out there that can cost you. There's a lot of people out there that don't have your best intentions in mind, and they're only looking to make their pockets bigger. Do your homework, do your research. As I said before, my videos are only about 15 minutes long. It's the tip of the iceberg. You might not agree with me on some stuff, but you have to understand what I'm trying to accomplish here. As I said before in this video, I think I mentioned it twice. I'm a shop owner. If I were to sell you a downpipe and say that you need a tune and try to scare you into that, at the end of the day, my pockets would be a lot bigger. That's not why I got into this business. I got in it to help people. Same thing with the $10,000 topic. Putting the proper information out there is key. Then you go do your research, you do your homework, and you decide what you want to do with that. You might want to help your fellow man or woman out. You may not. That's what I feel like I was put on this earth to do. And that's why I'm doing these videos, and that's why we'll continue to do these videos. As I said before, please like and share. Helps the channel grow tremendously. I really do appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate the comments from the bottom of my heart, and I want to keep doing them and pumping out more information. So if you want to see a topic covered, simply comment down below. Hopefully you have a good rest of your day, or hopefully you had a good day.